Crazy Train Guy presents an Okanagan Valley Railway production. Another episode of How Did He Do That? In this video, I'll show you how I made these easy to build and easy to remove wood chip loads. Started, um, we have the load here, so as I showed earlier, pops right out. Before I get going, I just want to say a lot of these ideas are not original ideas. I mean, uh, we get ideas from fellow modelers in the industry, and in this case, it is somebody I know, a, a friend of mine named John. And I just want to give a shout out to him. He has a website. His train layout is the uh, Manitoba, Minnesota uh, subdivision, uh, CP Rail. And he modeled that for 25 years. He tore it down and he's now doing the Gateway Spur, which is still CP Rail, Canadian Pacific. And he has a website, uh, which is in the comments below. I just want to give a shout out to John. So let's go. So basically, uh, the, the length of the interior of the car is about an uh, eight inches, eight and an eighth. So we're gonna go eight inches long, or even. Um, and then uh, width-wise, we're gonna go about. Let's see, it's about uh, one in uh, what five sixteenths. So we're gonna go about a, one in an eighth, which is about uh, there. Okay. And then depth-wise, we're looking at about three eighths one and three eighths so we're gonna go on the height though we're gonna go over we're gonna go one and five eighths just to make sure that uh, we have the load is you want the load to stick up over the car uh, such as mine does here but okay now i'm just going to basically go through the bill of materials here so as you see i've got a ruler use the measure or you can use a tape measure that works for you box cutter knife make sure it's sharp enough to cut through the foam i have a square and I have, for later on, I've got just regular household weight glue, uh, craft brush. I've got a little, uh, it's a former jello um, cup or whatever, just to put the glue in. If you want to do it that way, you're going to apply it directly to the foam. And some very finely um, fine sawdust. Uh, for HO scale, you want something like that. You don't want any rough stuff. All right, so let's get going here. So we're going to start. So we need something 80s. Here's just a stuff. Scrap piece of foam, um, nothing fancy. So we're gonna go with the eight there. Just make that square. And then we're gonna go widthwise an inch and an eighth. Just gotta measure twice to make sure you get it right. Okay. All right. Get that out of the way. Just start with a nice, easy pull away from the foam. So you get a nice groove in there, and then you can pull the ruler away and just start cutting. With that motion until you cut all the way through the foam. Okay, now we'll do the side cut. Okay, so let's just test this out. Let's see the piece isn't perfect. 
Square off this end as well. Ah, perfect. Okay, so we got a nice fit. So, what we want to do now is mention inch and five eighths up. So, we're going to go to here. Here. a little bit there. Put it on the one side. Oops. There we go. I'll rough it up a bit. I'll do a little bit down the other side. I don't want to do it too much. You don't want to lose that part where the load's peeking over the car. as well. Okay. There we go. All right. Great. Now on to the next step. As you can see, I have cleaned up the uh, work area, got rid of the foam, foam scraps, what have you. I've put down a piece of newspaper to work with because this will get messy. Um, and one other ingredient I have is a mixture of water and isopropyl alcohol. Uh, same uh, mixture basically used for when you're putting down your ground foam and such on your scenery. It's the same idea. We're going to use that to help settle the uh, sawdust in. So before I get too messed up here, I'm going to open that up so I can reach in when I need to. Now I'm going to apply the glue directly to the foam. As I mentioned earlier, if you want, you can put it into a container first if that's the way you want to do it. There's always more than one way to uh, to solve a problem. So let's put it on nice and thick. Okay, let's put on more. Just get the get the glue nice and deep into all the crevices and stuff. So you can come. Oops. You can see that. Okay, great, perfect. So let's get to the messy part. So basically, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray on there. spots okay so now we're gonna do a little bit of the sides there's a scrap piece of foam I'm just gonna get that out of the way we're gonna do the sides a little bit so you maintain the illusion that it's a load not a piece of foam in your railway car have almost enough to go all the way around here. We'll do the sides first. Okay. Okay. By the way, you can, by the mess I'm making, you can 
That is why I'm working in my garage. Uh, I mean, if you got a good work area in your basement or wherever, by all means use it, but make sure you're, you've got enough drop sheets down or whatever. If, if you make a mess, you're not gonna wreck anything. Let's do the last side. Oh, let's put it on a thick side here. There we go. It's one of the things I like about the hobby is uh, you can make a mess and have fun doing it. And the other thing I like too is when you're doing scenery or loads or whatever, if you make a mistake, you can just start all over again. I don't like the way that came out on the end there, so let's just redo that quickly. And we'll let it dry. There we go. So we're gonna let this dry over a few hours or even let it dry overnight if you want. And then we'll have a look at the uh, results. That's it for now. Okay, we've let the uh, load dry overnight, the sawdust and the glue. It's come out pretty nice there. So let's test it out. So here's the old load, we'll take that out and we'll put the new one in. And there you have it. You've got yourself relatively inexpensive wood chip load. Thank you for watching and if you like what you see please subscribe. Thank you.